Welcome back to another video everyone. I am going to do another review today, but this one is going to be a little bit different. We have just received the unfortunate news that Vortex, the six inversion aerodynamics custom looping coaster at Kings Island that opened in 1987, will be closing forever after operating for 33 seasons. This comes as a surprise and I am genuinely disappointed as Vortex is a true classic and one of the most iconic coasters out there. When Vortex opened in 1987, it was the world's first coaster to invert riders upside down six times. Pretty impressive for that time, I must say. Of course, this is one of the best looking coasters out there as well. It is so iconic for all of the beautiful pictures people have taken over the course of its 33 years. This is one that will genuinely be missed by me. As you are passing the Coney Mall section, the Racer, the Antique Autos, and go towards Windseeker, you will come up on Vortex. You will enter from the left of the ride near the sign. There is quite a winding path to get to this station. Something really cool that I love about Vortex is that the station is actually reused from the old aero suspended coaster, the Bat, that originally occupied this very site in the early 80s for three seasons. You can actually currently still see original concrete footings from the bat as well from the station and the ride that are still in the ground. Of course, given what we know now about Vortex, who knows how much longer those will even be there. After loading into the classic aerodynamic cars, just like you will find on any other aero looper, you will make a small dip and turn right out of the station, then engage with a 148 foot tall lift hill which I'll add was the tallest coaster in the world when it opened as well. This is a pretty slow and shallow incline since it is a classic arrow after all. Looking at this footage, which is the official POV from Kings Island, you will see that it is a very old POV and you will definitely notice that as you get to the top of the lift and turn to the right, you will notice that there was no Banshee, Diamondback, or Mystic Timbers. So this official footage is at least 15 years old probably. After the turn to the right, you will drop down 138 feet, reaching a max speed of 55 miles per hour. After this, you rise up into a very large turnaround that swoops down to the left, then goes through a couple janky turns before shallowly descending into the two vertical loops. Following the vertical loops, you will rise up into a sharp turn to the right, hit some block brakes, drop off of that, and slowly roll through two corkscrew inversions. Following the corkscrews, the train twists down to the right, and then you enter into the batwing element, which are the last two inversions. After this, you will hit an unremarkable helix to the left to end your 1 minute, 3,800 foot long ride experience on Vortex. When I got the chance to ride Vortex in August of 2019, I got a seat in row 1 of car 4, which is known for being the magic seat on these aero loopers. My ride I got on it was not bad in all honesty. I didn't get a lot of head banging. It was very minimal in fact. However, I did not get off this ride really wanting to jump back on it. I only rode it this one time as after my morning ride where I walked on, it ended up getting a pretty big line later as it was a pretty busy Saturday. If I would have known about the news we would receive, I definitely would have hopped on for a second ride though. This ride to me was just honestly really unremarkable. I was going into it with some excitement as I thought it looked like a really fun looping coaster but the pacing is not that great in my opinion. It especially dies when you hit that helix at the end. The best part of the ride for me was probably the first drop, since it is actually pretty large. This is, after all, one of the largest aero loopers still currently operating, albeit not for much longer. I also like the batwing element here, I suppose, but more so just because it is a fairly unique element to me. The layout overall doesn't really do a whole lot besides turning you upside down several times and without any real positive Gs or any real forces. The huge swooping turnaround after the first drop, though it looks really cool, is just really pointless. And that is something I can definitely echo with Anaconda at King's Dominion as well. Both Anaconda and Vortex, to me, have these really pointless transitions and turnarounds that don't add anything to the ride. You just kind of meander through them. Anaconda admittedly though is the worst offender as far as that goes, but back to Vortex. Even though it sounds like I am digging on this ride a lot, and it definitely is nowhere near an amazing ride in my book, I still did at least enjoy myself somewhat on Vortex. I definitely would have ridden it another time if the line hadn't been so long later on in the day. I will definitely miss seeing this gorgeous coaster in the skyline at Kings Island. It really is an icon, though it may be outdated and janky looking with its classic aero transitions. It is a huge part of Kings Island's history, just as the racer, the beast, and the original bat are. It is not a ride I found to be unbearable in any way, 
though it could just have been where I sat. For my final score, I will give Vortex a score of 6 out of 10. It is not a bad ride in my opinion, but it just doesn't really leave me wanting to ride it over and over and doesn't have any real standout moments. Though I am saddened about the loss of such a classic, I am also excited about what the future may hold for Kings Island. I'm not going to discuss that in this video though. I will make a video in the future discussing what I think may replace Vortex in the next few years, but for right now, let's get our final rides on Vortex and look forward to the huge 2020 season ahead of us. With Orion opening next year, Kings Island will surely get another huge push with the already excellent lineup of coasters they already have. Thanks for watching this review everyone. Make sure you get to Kings Island if possible and get your final rides on Vortex before it is lost to history. The ride will operate as normal for the remainder of Haunt 2019, the last day of operation being October 27th, 2019. I want you all to tell me your favorite memories about Vortex in the comments. Did you enjoy this ride, or did you find it to be extremely uncomfortable? I would love to hear your thoughts. Be sure to like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.